All right, guys, I am camping with my family. I got a minute away. They are at a little water park here, so I'm in the cabin. And I wanted to share a word with you guys. I often think about what would the prayer of Jesus be like? We know that Jesus prayed, meaning it's important that we pray. But what exactly was his prayer while he was praying? This is fully man, fully God, has this incredible relationship with the Father in prayer. And I want to show you a chapter you might not know about in the Bible that's life-changing, and it's literally the prayer of Jesus. This is the perfect will of Jesus, and it might surprise you what he prays. So I have here, this is what's called a Bible. It's like an actual, real, you can feel it, you can touch it Bible. It's not a digital one, it's, it's a real Bible. And I just want to read you a chapter in John 17 of the prayer of Jesus. Again, I'm camping, so you might be seeing people in the background and hearing kids scream and all that. But listen to what John 17 says. This is actually titled in your Bible, the prayer of Jesus. It says, after all saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. Now, this is Jesus obviously about to go to the cross. For you have given him authority over everyone and he gives eternal life to each one that you've given him. And this is the way to eternal life. So telling us what is eternal life? He says, this is the way to eternal life. Look at this. This is the way, verse three, to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, the one you send to earth. This is eternal life, to know God. A lot of people think eternal life is just dying and going to heaven, but Jesus says eternal life is actually knowing God and knowing the, Jesus the Christ, the one you sent to earth. Verse four, I brought you glory when you were here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, this is Jesus praying to his Father. This is so powerful. Now, Father, bring me into glory that we shared before the world began. For those who don't think that Jesus is eternal or Jesus is God, Jesus says, bring me into the glory that we shared before the world even began. So there's a relationship with him and the Father before the world was even created. Verse six, I revealed to, what, to you the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. Verse eight, for I pass on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and I know that I, they, they know that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. My prayer, and this is Jesus saying his prayer. Listen to this. My prayer is not for the world. So Jesus goes, I'm not praying for the world right now, but for those you've given me because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you and you've given them to me so they bring me glory. Verse 11, now I'm departing from the world. And this is Jesus praying to his father. They are staying in this world, but I'm coming to you, Holy Father. You've given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so they'll be united as we are. Verse 12, during my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so not one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scripture foretold. This is obviously speaking about Judas. Verse 13, now I'm coming to you and I told them many things while I was with them. In this world, they'll be filled with joy. I've given them your word and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world. This is the reason why the world hates us as Christians. The reason they hate us is because we do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. And then this is the prayer of Jesus, verse 15, very important. This is, man, it gives me chills. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. This is Jesus's perfect prayer. Lord, I don't want you to take them out of this world, but my prayer is that you keep them safe from the evil one, the evil one being the devil. So Jesus's perfect prayer is that the Father would guard us from the plans of the devil. Verse 16, they do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Verse 18, just, and look at this, just as you sent me into the world. And guys, we're getting a picture of the prayer of Jesus. This is literally what he prayed to the Father. This is so powerful. Just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. So in the same way, he's saying, you sent me to the world to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to proclaim the gospel of repentance. I'm now sending them just like you sent me. So you might not think you're sent, but you are sent. You have been sent by Jesus into the world the same way the Father sent Jesus to the world. Verse 19, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice to them so they can be made holy by your truth. I'm praying not only for these disciples, but all who will ever believe in me through their message. Guys, that is incredible. He goes, I'm not just praying for these disciples right now. Anybody that will hear the message after me, after them, I also am praying for. So that includes you. Jesus here in this text, John 17, 20, is actually praying for you and me all the way back here. Verse 21, this is his prayer. I pray that they will be one just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I'm in you, and they may be in us, and they may be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. 
Je Jesus says, Father, the same way me and you had a relationship and have a relationship, that oneness that we have, I'm praying that they with each other would be just as connected. And, and how divided are we in the body of Christ? I look at even just Christian YouTube. I'm like, we are so divided over secondary issues, over little doctrines, and yet Jesus goes, in the same way me and the Father are one, I pray they would be one. Verse 22, we're almost done. I've given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. So Jesus says, I'm giving them my glory that you gave me. May they experience perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. So the unity is what lets the world know that we're sent by God and that Jesus was sent by the Father. Verse 24, Father, I want these whom you've given me to be where I am. Then they can see the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Verse 25, O righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I do, and these disciples know you sent me. Verse 26, I have revealed to you them, and I will continue to do so. To do so, then your love for me will be in them, and I'll, your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. The perfect prayer of Jesus. I want you guys to highlight John 17. If you want to know how you should be praying, what you see here is you don't see a religious repeating every word, saying the same thing over and over again. You see a relationship with Jesus and the Father and Jesus requesting his Father, talking as a conversation he's having with the Father, saying, Father, in the same way you gave me glory, I now give them glory. In the same way me and you are one, I pray that they would be one. Because Jesus is praying for us, and the Bible says even now, he's a high priest forever making intercession for us. So this unity thing is not just like, oh, we need to be in unity. This is Jesus's prayer. When we come in unity, we are answering the prayer of Jesus that we would be one together as him and the Father are one. Let us walk in unity. Let us stop being so divided over the dumbest stuff. We're so dumb. Do you speak in tongues? Do you cast it? Oh, I can't associate with this guy because he casts demons. I can't associate with this guy because he's speaking tongues. I can't associate with them because they're cessationists and they're not and they're Baptists and they're... Jesus goes, I'm praying that you guys would be one. That you'd stop walking in this disunity and arguing and bickering and you guys would walk in one just as the Father and I walk in one. This is so, guys, the prayer of Jesus, John 17, let us walk in unity. Let us walk the way Jesus wants us to walk. This is a perfect picture into the prayer life of Jesus. Now, if Jesus had a prayer life, how much more should we have a prayer life? Prayer works. Prayer works. Jesus, three years, three short years, yet he would get away to be with the Father. I wonder if so many of us are burned out and tired and weary because we don't get alone with God. If it worked for Jesus, it, it should work for us. Let us, let's get alone with God. Let's get in the secret place. Let's get radical on fire. The disciples said, Look, Jesus, teach us to pray. There's something about having a prayer life that makes you powerful. They recognize that there was power in prayer. And so I hope this blessed you. I've never really done a video like this where I just jump on and share a chapter of the Bible with you guys. I'm gonna do more of these. In fact, I have another chapter I wanna share with you guys. If you'd like these, comment down below. You want me to do more of these more stuff out of the studio just i mean i'm on vacation with my family camping and i was like thinking about the prayer of jesus and how powerful jesus's prayer was so let me know below if you like this what you think about john 17 we're live monday tuesday and then sometimes thursday we have partner prayer calls monday at noon pray about becoming a monthly partner it helps the ministry helps us to continue to do this i love you guys i appreciate you appreciate you guys and i'll see you in the next video